Just when you thought that Xbox was killing it, at least in revenue growth, we see some big dips in some T areas. Now, what does it all mean? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because I'm not too proud to ask. All right, so what's going on here? Well, Microsoft just recently dropped his financials, okay? And in those financials, it shows the performance within the gaming di division. And within the gaming division, it was revealed that there were some key dips, all right, in revenue performance and key Xbox areas. And since the release of this information, the internet has gone ablaze. Some say it's doom and gloom and it's all over for Xbox. Others say there's nothing to see. Those both could not be the farthest things from the truth in, in, in on opposite sides of the spectrum, but you know your boy is going to come straight down the middle and give you the truth. All right. So what is the truth of M2K? What's really going on here? Why is this such a big story? You know what I'm saying? And why do people have such opposing uh, takes on what's going on? Well, let's, let's read the story first and then let's chop it on down. All right. So this is being reported via Twinfinite. And I got to say again, man, I don't know what's going on on the, in, the internet news front. But y'all with all these goddamn advertisements, man, like y'all got, y'all got to cut this stuff out. This is, this is looking too thirsty. But anyway, with that being said, as told by Twinfinite, it reads, the article reads, Xbox hardware revenue declines by 48%. Golly, year over year. Microsoft's gaming revenue drops by 10%. Xbox Live is up by 14% though. Hmm, it's all interesting. Let's go over it. Today, Microsoft announced its financial results for the fourth quarter for the fiscal year 2019 related to the period between April 1st and June 30th. Um, and first, we get an updated look at the performance of the more personal comp computing business unit, which includes the gaming division. Gaming as a whole. Well, no, no, I, I did skip it. Okay, Xbox Live active users went up from 63 million to 65 million since the last quarter. But more importantly, I don't even know why they brought that up. The bigger thing is, is that year over year, it went up from 57 million to that 65 million, okay? So that's a bigger number. And, and hold on to that figure in your head. Um, gaming revenue as a whole in the quarter was 2 point, might as well say 2.1 billion and declined 10% year on year. Um, they got a couple of charts here that show you the comparisons, you know, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, it, it, it gives you over the, the gaming, the Xbox Live monthly active services and all that good stuff. Okay. So, let me see what else here. And that's basically it. So, again, the, the hardware sales went down 48%. The software sales went down 10%. Xbox Live went up 14%. And those are all year over year litmuses. Okay. Now, in me reading that, you probably said MM2K, what's the big deal? They still made two, two billion, 2.1 billion. As I always try to tell y'all, that may be the litmus and the standards we hold, but None of this matters to us. We're not keeping Microsoft afloat, primarily. You know who's keeping Microsoft or any Fortune 500 company afloat? It's the investors. And to the investors, this would be a deal, okay? Um, it don't matter if you're making a lot of money. You have to compete not only with your competitors, but you have to compete with yourself and show that you're growing. That's what the market cares about. So... Is this a, a good report or a report that should just be negated and ignored? No, not at all. Because 
you need to keep an eye on this one and make sure it's not a trend. But is this a spell doom and gloom for Microsoft like they're shutting down their doors tomorrow? No, no, it doesn't. But here's my ultimate thoughts. Here's what I think gamers need to derive from all this information. I'm gonna tell you first and foremost, your boy MM2K is not surprised, okay? And here's why I'm not surprised. I've been telling y'all this for Lord knows how long, but nobody wants to listen to your boy. But again, we'll do it again. If I gotta shove the jagged pills down your throat and make you chug on that water like you being waterboarded, I'll do that because you need this medicine. Here's why I'm not surprised. Sales in the consoles are horrific. However, up until recently, the only way to get Game Pass is through the consoles. Game Pass is being heavily discounted due to the big push to get heavy saturation with Game Pass. But yet, you still have the expense of licensing third parties for the, for the uh, subscription service and making first party games, even big games like Gears 5. So here's the problem. The extra sales mentioned in the past by Microsoft that Game Pass was supposedly to spawn ain't happening. <laughs> it's, it's clearly not happening. It may have been a trend in Xbox's, uh, Xbox Game Pass's early stages at its height with State of Decay. But I think as people got their hands on, their, on the service, you're seeing a growth in the service but you're not seeing that as static value, meaning, ooh, I feel so much value with this, this subscription service and I love the content that's in the subscription service. I wanna make sure that I never lose this these items. Let me go buy the DLC or let me go buy the game. So just in case they, they remove it from the service, I still got it. It's not bringing valuable content to people. It's just giving you a whole bunch of games in some games, people say, oh, I might be interested in it. But th there's a difference between a deal and value, okay? Like, me and my wife was just having a discussion the other day. She was like, MM2K, we need to scrape up all of our money and buy this thing that we really can't afford because they've marked it down like 30 40%. That is a big deal. And I said, yes, that is a great deal, honey, but it has no value to us. Number one, we got to scrape up the pennies to get it. And number two, this thing ain't going to be something that we're going to use on a regular basis. So it doesn't have value to us. And that, my friends, is the problem. Because Xbox needs people, and particularly the uh, commercial class, the casuals, to see value in Xbox Game Pass. If they see value in Xbox Game Pass, then they will do what? Buy more Xboxes, and you won't see a 48% dip. See, I don't want to hear this garbage about, oh, it don't matter about the console sales and all that other stuff. If your primary way, the casuals don't be built in PCs all like that. They got mobile phones, and they'll buy dedicated devices. You might have hardcore gamers that game on their PCs all like that, all right? So with that being said, if you're a casual gamer, and you're, you're all about dedicated devices, like a console, and you have a subscription service that you have to get that dedicated device for, and that dedicated device drops 48%, that's a tall tale sign that even though your main subscription service may be a deal, it's not of value to your core demographic that you're trying to reach or your target, target demographic. See, I gotta get y'all business acumen up. Does it mean that Microsoft is closing its doors of the Xbox division? Hell no, okay? But this is definitely not a situation that there's nothing to see here, there's nothing to see here, all right? That extra money that Phil and company was, was talking about all over the place that Game Pass was supposed to, to spawn, that was supposed to keep the company afloat while they were hemorrhaging money, buying these third-party games, hemorrhaging money while making these triple-a games like gears and building up these quote-unquote studios right and and all that other stuff and and hemorrhaging money giving you game pass for a dollar they're doing this for a reason but what was supposed to offset a lot of that was the fact that you guys were going to buy dlc and buy extra content for these games and game pass and you're not doing it again because you don't see the content as valuable even though Game Pass is a good deal. 
So with that said, as my boy Keenan Ivory Wade said, it don't be a menace. Message! <laughs> Without valuable software, aka triple A bangers, radically, I mean dedicated to the, the service to help radically grow its demand, Game Pass will be that deal that to many people has no value. And I said from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because who cares what I think? I want to know what you think. But if you did like what I had to say, you can catch me on the corner every boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples. Dirk Grigany, Snow Bunny, Nethos. This past Wednesday, man, we had a hell of a Scram Punks, man. Check it out. Scram Punks. Weekly, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just look up hashtag Scrampunks for more information. Check out my brother in the broadband bullies, man. Last night, they had a crazy-ass multiplayer podcast, man. One of the most, the, not one, the most entertaining shows out there. Check them out. You know what I'm saying? Check out that Discord link because we cutting up in there. Check out that Patreon link because we need your support to keep the entertainment pumping. Check out the links to the gear because it's fly. And last but not least, check out your boys, new channel on twitch.tv it is called the hard knock digital culture where we highlighting hardcore triple a games the stuff that xbox needs to make game pass of value we're highlighting hardcore gritty uh, media like uh anime martial arts stuff like that check it out you don't want to miss and with that said you guys all have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace